Saturday, everybody. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. Today is going to be very, very active. You'll find out why. We'll be right back. It's time for the monologues. Let's hit the streets of Accra and hear what the beautiful ladies have to say. Well, they said if you educate a woman, you educate the whole nation. So we have to like get educated so that we could know everything going on in the world. It's fair because nowadays, uh, guys, men, before you get married, if you are not working, they don't respect you. And even if it's not about marriage, if a guy comes in to date you and you are not working, he, or, he might think that you'll be a burden to him. So if you are working, if you focus on your career to become who you are before you see other things. I think it, it's right because a woman, a woman like, you don't have to depend on someone, okay? Maybe your husband or something. Some mom may say, I'm waiting for my husband before I eat, or I'm waiting for my husband to do this. But as a woman, you have to be independent. You have to own yourself, okay? You shouldn't depend on anyone. Just because you're a woman doesn't mean you should relax or something. So our career has to be high esteem. So I prefer that, yeah. It is fair because ladies must, must stand to achieve whatever they want in life. No matter what it's best for um, a woman or the equal opposite sex to also yeah, like career wise yeah, get that first time. Because I don't think um, right after school you should get into marriage. I think you should what like it's time for you to what you've learned from school, it's time for you to like practice it yeah, and build yourself up. Yeah, so that's what. We are going on to the woman on the move. She's extra hard working, pressing on towards her goal. Let's see who she is this week. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Spectra Global Limited. Thank you and how are you? I'm great. All right. I'm great. So let's go in and see what you have for us. Awesome. So where are those big tables, <laughs> big drawing sheets? Um, those are prehistoric. Wow. They... I'm traditional. I love it. <laughs> We don't work with big tables and big T squares and where you have to basically lie on the table to, for, for you to draw. We don't do it. It's over 20 years we ago. We call those guys draftsmen. Uh -huh. So what's the difference between what they do and what you do here? Okay. So the, usually when people ask me this question, I just bring it to something that they, they know quite well. Like the difference between a medical doctor and a nurse. The difference between an architect and... Um, a car technician or a draftsman, as um, you call it, is one, even in the training, okay? Architects take six years of school time to train. And we are given education on every aspect of the built environment, okay? A car technician takes maximum two years of training. And secondly, um, the level of understanding of an architect. An architect does more than drawing lines and um, buildings okay so what we do is we have we have understanding of what the architectural requirements and code of, of ethics and um, building regulations and everything are we also have understanding of the work of the engineers because as an architect you are on top of all the various allied professionals so you are working with structural engineers you are working with mechanical engineers you are working with electrical engineers you are working with quantity surveyors you are working with interior designers and you have to know what they are all supposed to do so that if they are making a mistake on the project, since you'll be the one to be held finally um, liable, 
you are supposed to be able to tell when they are going off so you can bring them back on track. Okay, a car technician, a, a draftsman cannot do that. Another difference is the level of complexity of projects we can handle. Do you get disappointed when you drive through town and you see some Why? of the structures? Around? Definitely. Definitely. Why, why, why do you get disappointed? Because it, it can be way better. It can be way better in terms of um, just the, even the aesthetic appeal. And sometimes maybe when you go into um, these buildings, what the inside looks like, um, not just in terms of the beauty, but in terms of the functionality. The things like thermal comfort, things like um, in, in functionality of the spaces and so on and so forth, they can be better. People will talk about cost, so yes. they want to go to the wayside and just give a few notes to someone to draw for them. Yes. So how do you convince people that to put up a good building, the one that is safe and have that comfort, you'd have to look for an architect. Great. What we do is beyond lines. Before an architect we even design, uh, in quotes, a simple house for you, they will have to sit down with you and do a diagnostic interview with you. Who are you? What is your family like? What is your day-to-day -day routine like? Where do you work? Where, location, where, of the land. location of the land. What does the land come with? They will go to the site and find out. Sometimes you go to the site and just by mere view of what is on the land, you know that, uh-uh, this is trouble. How many workers do you have? Um, we are about 20 now. 20? Yes. That's, that's good. So let's go around and see what some of them are doing. So yes, Moses is a car technician. So presently what Moses is working on is the um, technical drawings of a project that, we have, that has been designed. So the architect does the concept and so on and so forth. And then we pass it on to the car technician who now details it out. So what is he doing? Francis, he is an architect and he's working on um, another project. He's inspecting drawings that have been completed by a car technician. So before any drawings go out, it comes back to the architect and then he crosses the T's and dots all the I's to make sure that whatever it is that was in mind is what is, what is going out. Mm, talking as if everything is easy. <laughs> um, what have been some of the challenges in doing this business? Who? Some of the challenges in doing this business. Um, the, one, one of the challenges is, is the mindset of the people where they don't even approach you because in their minds you're expensive so they won't even ask. Another challenge we face in the industry is the fact that people who have good projects to work on in the country somehow think that Ghanaian architects are not up to it so they go and bring in um, designers from South Africa, from everywhere else in the country, when we are all right here. So what I'd like to say is that um, they should give us a chance. We be it institutions, be it local business people, they should give us a chance. We know what we are doing. We are in this environment, we have been well trained and we understand what it takes. We have the creativity that it takes. Uh, this industry is male dominated. So what was the driving force? for you getting into, into it? I think even the mere fact that it was male dominated was interesting to me. Because I remember when um, I said that I wanted to do architecture, every Tom, Dick and Harry was like, Karen, this is a man's thing. Number one, it's difficult. Even the course, you may not be able to finish it and architecture students don't sleep, they don't do this. I mean, I was like, oh, okay, that's quite challenging. So I went in. So you have a lot of people watching you now. What advice would you give to them, especially those who want to start their own business? I would say that master the craft. And, and, and the craft has to be good, the product has to be good. The skill that you are going out there with should be baked, it should be well honed. All right, thank you, Karen Evans Ham. You're most welcome. Our winning woman for today is Mrs. Benis Esiedu. She's popularly known as Mabna. I call her Mabna, so we'll be calling her Mabna. I'm sure when you see her, you'll be like, oh, yes. 
Well, she is a certified fitness coach. And that's why I said today is going to be active because she probably might start asking me to start doing some workouts. Well, we are not working out today, Mabna. You are no, very, yeah, very no. welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And I'm so saying much. that because, I mean, for those of you who follow her on social media, this lady can be nine months pregnant and she's like, push it, push it, push it. So I'm like, wow, you just had a baby. Look at I you. I did, I did. So what led you to fitness? Um... And it's, welcome to the show, by the way. I mean, you, I'm so active. You. I'm feeling so active because <laughs> I'm so you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So thank much. you for coming on. Yes, so I'm, but, I'm but honored. But what inspired you, you know, to fitness? I think a, it's a lifestyle of some people I saw that okay. inspired me. Okay, because a lot yes. of it's normally like, you know, men, you know, especially in our culture, we normally will see the boxes and then, yeah. you know, the athletes and That's all that. True. You know, it That's wasn't true. really, especially for like training and the kind of training that you do, but it's excellent. And I'm in awe Thank of you, you to Thank be you honest. So, much. so tell us a bit about it, your journey. You know. Well, um, like I said, it was um, from a lifestyle or so of, of um, some people. Um, my father, um, for all my life, I've known, um, has been taking care of the less privileged. So he has oh, wow. a center where he homes them. Where um, is this? It's in Offenso in the Ashanti oh, region. Wow. Yes, um, it's a center for the physically challenged. And um, so because of that, he he gets um, foreigners coming in during the, their summer holidays mm -hmm. to volunteer. Right. So you have physiotherapists, you have clinical psychologists, all, all manner of people coming in. And, and it's something that I noticed that every time they came, they came with their running shoes. Mm. And they will carry their running shoes all the way from where they are coming from to my village. And every morning I'll see them jog. So, and it's not something that was, yeah, was common, at, common all. In, at all. In at fact, all. nobody in my that. village we ever. We don't do that. <laughs> I never saw it ever. I mean, the, the exercise we do is go to the farm, carry our things back to the right. house, you know, long distances they would do. But right. I never saw anybody intentionally wear shoes that I am going to run in the morning. So um, as, I think as it went on and on and, it just sort of registered with me. So, wow. at what age were you when you started to see this? Um, probably six years. Okay. All the way till I went to the uni. Wow. Yes. So it was it was a habit that I think I picked. Or you no enjoyed really. it? I did. I did. I, did you I ever was... go running with them? Oh yes, yes. Most time. I, I thought it was fun. You know, I I didn't think it was exercise at the time. I just thought it was fun to be, you know, following them running. So people would think, oh, she's also doing. <laughs> So um, um, from there, um, you know, by some act of God or whatever it is, I went to the university and I studied sports and exercise. I know, science. I'm just reading here. You have a yes. you know, Bachelor of Science degree in sports and exercise. Yes. yes. So you actually knew what you wanted to do. And yes. you're actually, you're one of the very few people because a lot of the time it's very common to have a degree in something and then maybe start that. But along the way, you find out that, well, this is not really what I want to do, especially true. when maybe your parents have persuaded you to go, but this is what you wanted to do. Yep. Yep, I remember um, at some point um, when I was little, I, 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 you, I mentioned that we had um, like physios and at a point I thought I wanted to be a physio because I hung around them, mm. I, I saw them work and all that. But later on, I just branched into sports and exercise science. That's beautiful. Yes. That's be and how has it changed your life? I mean, how are you, what, what, what sort of joy do you get out of what you're doing? And I'll tell you why I'm asking you this. Um, it's, it, there's so much satisfaction. You know why? Because I feel I am living, I'm living my life through my job. Because mm -hmm. um, fitness, I, I, love, I love the, the ability to be able to control that, just that little bit of my life, you mm -hmm. know? I, I want to be able to be strong. I want to be able to run when I want to run and not pant. I want to be able to go a certain distance. I want to be able to be a certain, you know, weight or height. No, sorry, no height. Size, you know? And it's, it's possible. I'm able to do that. And I don't do that just by myself. I do that with other women. And they pay me. <laughs> You know, they so pay like me to are, live so my life. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you're having fun. Exactly. You love it, but you're getting paid for it. So exactly. you're enjoying your I job. enjoy it. I enjoy yes. every bit and of I it. And I asked you because I spoke to a fitness instructor one time mm -hmm. who told me that 
and it's, it's just like what you're saying, but then, but what he was saying was that he gets so fulfilled when he sees the before and afters right. of his clients. Right. Because sometimes the before even mm -hmm. came with sort of some diseases. Oh, yeah. It's going to be high blood pressure, oh, yeah. high cholesterol, you know, and after certain months, they've lost so much weight. That's so, true. yes, they are smaller, looking good, yeah. but they are healthy. It's true. It's you true. Know? It's true. That too. That too. And as, you know, you go through the different phases of life, you... You're, you're still able to live that life. Mm -hmm. You're still able to do it effortlessly. But then, but then don't you think that it, it probably was difficult in the beginning because it's not really part of our culture, you know, to be, you know, exercising, mm -hmm. you know, aerobic. I mean, like, uh, we like food. It's true. You know, and then our food, too. Look at the carbs in it's it. It's true. And all of that. It's our true. entertainment, everything is food. <laughs> like, you know, and then we'll all eat and That's have true. fun. And when we finish eating, what do we do? We sleep. That's true. You know, so, so was that difficult when you were bringing that? Because now it's a bit popular. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I remember um, at a point um, after my my uni um, days when I came to Accra to start my national service. And luckily for me, I was, I was placed in the National Sports Council. Wow, and was that was because just, of your degree? Yeah, it was, okay. it was related. Mm -hmm. and, and it was just about the time we started our service that they opened their, their new gym. So then oh, wow. they just threw us into it. So we, we were in the right place at the right time. And I remember I started going on TV and my grandma would come all the way to my father's house and complain that this thing that I'm doing, I will not be able to have babies. She has heard that, you know, when you do these things, you can't have babies. So they should talk to me and let me try and do something else. I said, it's not like that. It's not true. Why, why did you think that? <laughs> like no the force idea. or what was it? I think he, uh, her explanation was that you become too strong. And, and so for some reason, she thinks that it will close your womb or it will... So ladies, listen to this. <laughs> Exercise will not close your womb at in all, any way. At in all. any way. And so... I actually, I hear it even makes, it, it makes you easier. It does. It mm. does. And I experienced it. And I'm wow. happy that, you know, I, I go through the phases like I told you. I experienced it during my first labor. I realized that, oh, it's, it's the breathing exercise that actually helped me through labor. I, I just had to remember because, you know, we, we, we even antenatal lessons, you don't get to know the labor breathing itself mm. practically. So then I, at a point, it was, I was pushing and baby wasn't coming. And then I just, you know, cast my mind. I was like, let me, let me go back and do my own breathing that I teach other people to do. I started breathing and... and baby just yes, came. Yes, yes. Baby just came. I was like, wow. Oh my God, I'm yeah. so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can tell. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. We are back, Mabna, and it's so funny. You were saying how your grandma was worried that yes, if was. you exercise, like with the strength and energy yep. that you did, you probably wouldn't be able to have a baby. Which now you're telling us, and I'm telling everybody, is not true. No, it's not. But then, how about exercising during pregnancy, though? Because you used to scare me. <laughs> I mean, I follow you on Instagram, and sometimes I see you, and you're like, you, with your tummy this long. So, how about that? Because I have heard though mm -hmm. that maybe with some women, depending mm -hmm. on how their pregnancy is going. Mm -hmm. Certain exercises or movements or something can po possibly mm -hmm. cause a miscarriage. Is that true? It, it's it, uh, right, you've, rightly so. Rightly so. You have to you have to check with your doctor. I mean, if your pregnancy is normal and everything is okay, you would know. Your doctor will let you know. Mm. If it is not, if it's a high risk pregnancy, mm. he will advise you on things you can do mm. and things. So you did you tell do. your doctor though what your lifestyle was oh, like? Oh yes, yeah. I mean, it, it's in my folder that I'm a fitness coach. <laughs> so uh, he, every time I went for antenatal, he was like, "Don't overdo it. Don't worry. I know mm. you don't overdo it." It's like, you know, I. Yeah, I, but were not <laughs> you tired? Actually, exercise is. It's my, my tension reliever. I, I exercise to, to take out tension, to take out stress. It, it, I use exercise to bring myself back, you know, when I'm sad mm. or when I'm nervous or mm. when I'm... Exercise really helps me. I just have to put on my shoes, go for a walk or a run, and I'll come back and I'm okay. <laughs> You're making me feel so bad. <laughs> Because I didn't want to tell you what my tension reliever is. I, I didn't want to tell a fitness coach. 
<laughs> no, no, no. Oh my goodness. Yes, it does. So, happen. what is it like now gathering the women? Because you do boot camps. I do. You know, and I even love your smoothies and all that. We'll get to that. Thank but you. then, you know, getting the women. How about like how how difficult or easy is it to convince them? Because a lot of the time, mm -hmm. I mean, my first excuse is, but the pain, right. but I'll be tired, right. but this, but that. I mean, now I've gotten over it and I've started working out a little bit. I mean, I've done, yeah, I I've can done see well. It. I've done I can well. see I mean, it. And those who know it's, me it's know, so obvious. you know, that I've done well, but I yeah. like boxing. Yes. But, but uh, you know, but it's a mindset thing. It is. You know, and like you said, well, my fear as well was I thought that if I exercise and I'll be able to sleep after mm. I've exercised, but I actually sleep better. Exactly. After exercise. Exactly. So do you have to convince women and what do you, what do you have to go through to get the women to come? I, I, every time I have to talk to someone new um, to take up exercise, I just... I tell them my life. Mm. I, I, I don't try to convince them any other way. I tell mm. them so. For instance, if now that I've had a baby, my baby is six months, if I have to um, talk to a new mom to exercise, I'll just tell her. Um, I was tired, I was always exhausted. I'll wake up in the morning, I feel like I had no sleep, but as soon as I started working out, I realized that I could actually sleep you know, better. Mm. I wake up in the morning, I'm not a zombie, I'm active. My Mentally, I'm more stable than I was before I started working out. So try it, you mm. know, and then it, it doesn't take too long for you to notice these things. Mm. Maximum three weeks, you will notice that, oh, things are actually changing. So for me, I don't even focus as much on, you know, your weight loss per se. I will be asking you as the weeks go by, are you sleeping better? Mm. Do you feel a bit more right. active? Are you able to consciously? What's your life like? Yeah, are you, are you happier? Are you feeling a little, a little bit more confident mental alertness exactly and then you realize they're like oh yeah i just noticed that oh i can sleep better oh i'm a, a bit more active oh, i feel more confident i'm like yes so now you realize that exercise is not only about losing weight it yes. does all these things for you right, as well that's right and our yeah. health yes and all that yes absolutely um, so when you met your husband i mean mm -hmm. this i have to ask <laughs> when you met your husband and he found that you were a fitness instructor uh -huh. what do you think do you think, oh my goodness, I have to be jogging after this woman, you know, the well, whole time? Well, he, he actually tried it, I think, a few times. I, I, I used to jog. I think I remember the time I met him. I used to jog every morning. It was my thing. Every mo No, it was evenings. I would jog every evening. And mm -hmm. then, so one time, he decided that he would go with me. <laughs> Someone who hasn't probably done anything all his life. <laughs> he decided to go with me. Hey, this guy went for his shoes. He ran, ran, run, came to pass me, run, run to the house. The next day, he couldn't get up. <laughs> I told you, it's not, it's not all this Takashi thing that you're doing. Take your time. <laughs> so I think my husband really, and he supports me. He absolutely supports right. me everywhere I go. You know, lately I hear him say that if he could, he knew his way around this thing. Like he will handle a class when I'm not around or he, mm. he will handle a class so I'll, I'll sleep or something like that. that I, he, he's absolutely supportive of what I oh, do. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. That's fa In fact, we have to give a toast to him. <laughs> okay. We have to toast to him and to all the husbands who support their wives. A to huge, you. To you. This is to you. This is to you. <laughs> mm. Mm. This is lovely. Yeah, it is. This is from the one-to-one -one bar here at the Moving mm. Pick. Ambassador Hotel, I really like that. That's, it has some yeah. peach in it. Yeah. Really good. So I'm just wondering, did you ever consider doing anything else? And would you ever think of doing anything else? But you've gone into smoothies and all, so maybe healthy yeah. foods. Yeah. Um, anything else? No. I think mm. whatever it is that I would do at this point will be in just the direction of mm. health and fitness because mm. it has helped me so much yeah. it's become a part of my life right. I, I don't see myself doing anything else so tell us about your smoothies and your juices and right. what, what led you what inspired you to start that um everything that i would ask other people to do i would test it on myself okay so um as part of my boot camps mm -hmm. um we have um, about two weeks, we call it the, the smoothie, green smoothie challenge. Oh, I've heard of so, it. Yes, so mm. anyone who has been up to my boot camp knows about the green smoothie right. challenge. So most, you know, in Ghana, we don't, we don't eat our greens. It's not, mm. it's not really part of us. So for us to be able to eat our greens on, on, the, on a regular basis, we would drink it. Mm. So you put so your... what are some of the greens for those yes, who don't so, know? Yes, so like lettuce, um, mm, okay. like... Um, 
you can put your vegetables like carrots, you can put um, spinach. Okay. Spinach is grown okay. here anyways. Okay, right. um, yeah, so all the parsley, mint, right. you can put all these ones okay. in. No contour because contour. <laughs> So so Tori, you have to cook it before they are warm. Yes, and we enjoy that. Yes, you have to cook it. Don't talk about it. Yeah, so so mainly lettuce, um, spinach, yeah, and then you know cabbage. Can you put cabbage in? Yeah, ca cabbage, yes, but okay. um, cabbage, you know, has a very strong smell, mm, so it, okay. it's a bit, it's a bit of a funny. Off. Okay. Yeah, but but lettuce, absolutely. You add these greens and then your your favorite vegetables. Um, and just probably one, a handful of fruits, you know, pineapple, so handful, give a bit of yeah, sweetness. a bit, yeah, sweetness, a little bit of lemon just to take off the, you know, the, the strong, mm -hmm. earthy smell of the greens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's it. It's, it's, I mean, it tastes so good. Skin even. It's it like your good. glow is beautiful. Thank you. Thank it's, you. I'm so, like I said, like, I just love it. Thank and you. And you're an inspiration. Thank you so, so much. So anytime, like, I'm feeling like, oh, I'm feeling lazy. I don't want, I'm like, hey, <laughs> Mapna, even when she was pregnant, <laughs> will be like, up there, up there, up there. So I think it's fantastic. Thank you. And you're Thank doing you. a great job. Thank you so much. You know, especially for, like, the health of women. And it's so, so important. Thank now, you. maybe there's some women watching right now, somebody mm. watching, and men watch the show as well. Yes. They love it. So, hi, men. We love Hello. you. <laughs> so, I mean, so just, just, you know, just picture somebody watching thinking, my bread, mm -hmm. now nah, I'm tired. And they're mean mm -hmm. to me. Or can I ever lose weight? Or something like that. Say mm -hmm. something to them to encourage them to, you know, pick up the lifestyle. Because right. it is a lifestyle, isn't it? It is. It? Yeah. It is. It so is. Maybe say something to them. Encourage my dear them. woman, <laughs> it's, 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 no, I understand. It's challenging in the beginning. For change to happen, you have to change. So, and when change comes, you're happy. You'll be excited. You'll feel fulfilled. So I will tell you this. Take it one day at a time. One day. And tell your, your friends around you. Tell your family. Tell your husband. When you tell people around you, it becomes difficult for you to stop, you know. Right. They'll, they'll push you, yeah. they'll keep you going. Your, your auntie or your sister or your baby will even ask you, mommy, are you not working out today? Mm -hmm. You see, but if you keep it to yourself, then it's so easy for you to stop. And encouragement is the best thing that you could ever have. So don't keep it to yourself. You can do it one day at a time. The fact that I do it doesn't mean that it's easy for me to do it every day. Mm -hmm. But it's up here in my head that when I'm stronger, I can take better care of my family. So oh, I'm doing like this for that. my family yeah. also. Yeah, so, so be stronger, like take care of yourself to so yes. you take care of the people you love. Absolutely. Yes. And this just came to my mind because, you know, you mentioned when you were young, you used mm -hmm. to see them wearing their running shoes. shoes. Yeah. So it's important to actually wear the correct, you know, like shoes, shoes, clothes. Because you know, I've seen somebody wear boo boo in a in a in a gym before. <laughs> right. I mean, a long boo boo right. up to there. Right. I, that I even think maybe it's even dangerous. It is. Because you can slip on it and it fall is. or something. I'm happy so, that you're you're mentioning this, mm -hmm. you know, correct out, outfit thing because. Mm -hmm. Um, you you definitely must. It's it's like going to your office. You you won't just wear anything to mm. your office. You won't just wear anything to a meeting. So you have to wear the correct gear because mm. um, you could injure your your knee. You could the impact of whatever activity you're doing yeah. could have a long term effect on mm. you, especially for women, okay. especially for okay. women who have had babies. Really? Yeah. Especially because Why? you know, because when we have the baby, um, the whole system goes through a lot of trauma. Aside that, your muscles, you know, they it's like a balloon. You know, when a balloon is new, it's very tight. You 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 can even hardly blow it. And finally, when you blow it and you 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 and def deflate it, it yes. again, it loses that tightness. tightness. It becomes a lot. Yeah, you see, it becomes a little more. Loser. Yeah. And as you inflate and deflate, it becomes very loose. That's how the muscles are. Mm. So as you get pregnant and then, you know, come back, get pregnant, the muscles, they lose their elasticity. Mm. You know, they can't, you know, handle the impact as before. So now you have to be, you know, cautious, even choose the exercises that you do. Mm. And that's what I come in. I cannot overemphasize the importance of talking to someone who knows what she's doing. Mm. I see a lot of women go to the gym right after baby and they're doing crunches. You I want shouldn't to do that. It is, I, when I, I hear it or I see it, something happens to me on to the inside. Breath. You know, I'm like, don't, don't do that. Really? So as, as, I've been working out for the past three or four months. I've never done any crunches. 
Cause so then what do you do to get your tummy back though? Because that, you know, you know, in, in Ghana, mm -hmm. your grandmother or your mother would tie some tight cloth yes. and tie it. Tight. Like, you, know, you can't really, breathe. I never I never uh, Mommy, you didn't do that for me. <laughs> but does that also work? It works. Okay. It works. What it, it does is it, it it helps you to to hold your your muscles, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. We call it hum. Yes. It helps you to yes. hum. And, yes. the, and the humming is, is one of the most important things you can do right after baby. Mm. Even if you can't work out at all. If so you have just suck your tummy in. Tuck it in. Yeah. Tuck it in. Anytime you remember, just tuck it in. And I actually just did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you realize that when you tuck in, you, you, it you, helps your you learn things. You yes. learn things. When you haven't, you slouch, sort yes, of. Yes, but yes, as soon yes. as you hum, you yeah. learn things you. And it's just such a ladylike look, it isn't is, it? It so is. It is. Hum, the ladies yeah, know, must have yeah, all the time, yes. and one of Tuck the most important in. things it does is, you know, if you already have a baby, a toddler, as you keep lifting them, keep lifting them, you and you unconsciously you do, <clears throat> you see, you you lift them with a with a heavy breathe out, which is not the best for your oh. your lower abdomen. I'm just trying to. Yeah, so okay. so even for myself, I have to. Constantly remind myself that when you're picking Judah up, do the hum and pick him. So I pick him with an exhalation. Because when I do, and I have and I have a diastasis recti, I could actually cause um, now we're going into this. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> let me just say a very simple thing. <laughs> diastasis recti simply is, um, you know when we have um, babies, the muscles here, Mm -hmm. Where the black line forms yes, when you're pregnant, yes. the muscles open. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's actually a a joint. It's like a zip. Okay, that that okay. side is like a zip. Okay. So as the belly is growing, the zip becomes loose because mm. the muscles open. So when baby is out, you have to now work for the thing to close. Right, right. But most of the time, you go to, you know, people who have no idea what they're doing, especially in the gym. So you'll be in mm. your house watching some YouTube and you're and doing crunches. Doing wow. And you're making the thing open up more. And if you mm. have, you know, um, hopes of having more, more babies, babies, the more babies you have, the more the wider it becomes. And it, it's not a good thing for a woman because oh. it can cause herniation, you know. Oh, right, yeah. right, so, right. And you right. have to close it. And humming is one of the best things you can do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to do that. It is. And it gives you the right posture. It that, does. I, that I really it like, does. yes. Now, I, I want to ask this. Do you have any support group um, for women, I like you know. Of course, it, it's what you're doing is your work. Yes. So you're making money out of it. You have yes. to charge. Now, yes. what about those who can afford your services? You know, and like what you've just said, some people don't know. That's true. They can't even afford you. They can't afford That's a true. gym. They can't yeah, afford right. another fitness coach. That's so true. So they are going on YouTube and they are just doing the crunches, which is really sure. bad. Very dangerous. So is there? Do you have a support group where people can ask you questions? Yeah. And, yeah. and all that. What do you do for maybe pregnant women or mm -hmm. mothers, fresh mothers? And is there anything you do? I do. I do. I do a lot of those too. Okay. In the in the, in the past, um, I've had every time I'm in a certain phase of my life, like when I'm pregnant, I will form a group, you know, a free WhatsApp group where oh, nice. I'll be posting, you know, the exercises that I am doing, the food that I am eating. So then everyone there, you know, can just follow right. and ask me questions. Right. Yeah, and I also have um, a WhatsApp group for um, new moms and okay. pregnant women okay. where we just, you know, help ourselves. We The things our mothers didn't tell us <laughs> about tell. pregnancy and having a baby, you know, we, we what ask are ourselves. Some of those, what is one of those things that maybe we didn't know? Okay, so your mommy will say, eat mashke. You have to mm -hmm. eat, eat mashke with, yes, with... With a lot of milk and sugar, you have to eat it morning, afternoon, evening just to get breast milk. And mashke, as you're eating this mashke, you're not going anywhere. You're sitting down, you're sleeping, and just feeding baby. Before you know it, you yeah, yeah. you've bloated out yes, of proportion. Yes, yes, and yes. and there are so the very people. So mashke ice cake for those who don't yes, know. Yes, ice cake, yes, yes. ice cake. And there are the same people who say, "Hey, mommy, you're, yeah, you're why you guess you? You see, yeah." But there are other foods that we can eat that. Will, we call the these foods that, 
that help to get breast milk, galactogooks. Okay. Galactogooks. Okay. So we have a lot of other meals. You can mm. just drink soup. You can eat mm. oats in the morning with, okay. you know, a little bit of um, avoc uh, pear. We call it oh, pear. Okay. Avocado on the okay. side. All these things really? give us... Yeah. Avocado? Yeah. Okay. They give us breast milk. So I, I, I remember when I had my first baby. Oh, I packed my oats. I took it to the hospital. And the lady that was next to me, her mom, as she was coming, her mom had mashed the kinky <laughs> in a big <laughs> flask. <laughs> I was saying in my head, oh, Charlie, your journey is not going to be easy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, mommy had brought a big flask of mashke. Right from the labor room, she poured it in the cup. She has to drink it, <laughs> you know? So if you don't know some of these things, it will, it will not help Especially you. Especially if you're not an active person. E so exactly. Sometimes you can have the, you know, the, the mash kinky once you, in a we, while. I'd never but, said that we shouldn't yes, have it, but yes. it, sh it should be sparingly. Mm. You know, soup is great. Mm. Have your soup. We, we love our carbohydrate. You know, have a little bit of your banku. And one thing mm. that is very tricky um, postpartum is that, you know, because of the breastfeeding, you get hungry very quickly. Mm. And so your stomach, you know, as you're eating, you're eating, it expands. Mm. And it, it adapts. So right, it's very difficult right, to, to train it right. to, to close up and become, you know, disciplined again. Mm. It becomes very ruthless. Mm. It just eats and eats and eats mm. anything, everything. So you have to now, you know, consciously, it's not easy, but you have to consciously wow. train it. Wow, well yes. done, well Thank done, you. well done. This is awesome. Thank you. This is absolutely awesome, I have to say. Now, I mean, there's so many people calling themselves fitness coaches. True. And then, you know, like you said, some of them don't know, you know, haven't gone through yeah. the, the exact training. Right. And this is something that we have to know. You know, even sometimes for, like, like uh, 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 posture is so important. You can very, do some very. exercise mm -hmm. that will actually hurt your spine. Yeah, true. Or it will hurt your, you know, your and, knee, and all your, of that. Your waist, yeah. You know, so maybe what should people look out for when they are looking for a fitness coach? Um, that will be a little dicey mm -hmm. because, you know, in our parts of the world, um, men are mostly fitness yeah. instructors yeah. and they are mostly muscled and yeah. you know huge so once you see a muscled huge guy in the gym oh this guy knows exactly what i i need to do we, we, they don't look out for i mean right what shows that i'm a fitness coach right. i'm just a yeah. tiny little woman <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but um i think that it's it's our responsibility mm -hmm. we, we can't put it on on them it's our responsibility mm. to at least read a little Mm. You know, the stage of life where you are, mm -hmm. you have to read a little. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I've just had a baby. Go on the net, you know, find out what, what kind of exercises can I do, can I not do. So you're you know? still learning, you're constantly yeah. learning. Yeah, oh, I have to, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm learning, I'm getting to know so many other things, wow. new things. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And how about your, I mean, I know that you've said that your husband is really supportive, but I'm, I'm sure there are times where you can, like if you've, like you, you've just had the baby, mm -hmm. so there are times where you probably have to take a break. Absolutely. So, yeah, so when you take a break, mm -hmm. do you have any assistance or do you have, you know, a team right. or are you doing it yourself um, at the moment? I have, I have, I have. Assistance. Okay. Yeah, I have assistance. For instance, when I had my second baby, mm -hmm. um, I had to go off for about three to four months because okay. I had complications during um, okay. um, labor. Mm -hmm. So I went off for about three to four months, mm -hmm. and my assistants were were. Oh, running, that's great. everything was running. That's great, yeah. Mabna. I can't tell you how inspired I am. <laughs> Thank now you. I'm going to be watching my and and you said little cubs more of like the the yes. soup and more yes. of the greens and more, more of the veggies, more of yes. the garden next to you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's... So so tell us what's like a like one just one day. What's mm -hmm. your meal plan like for just one day? I'm just wondering. Okay. So and, um, and does it fill you? That's the thing. Because sometimes you see like a meal plan mm -hmm. and you're like me me. This is, this is not <laughs> enough. This is not enough. I don't know if I'll be full. And you want we eat to be full. You know that. Yes. We don't yes. eat for energy. No. We don't eat no. for full. what is good. No. We no. eat to be full. Yes. And sometimes over full. It's true. <laughs> so teachers, we have to know. We have to unlearn and relearn mm. it, it's it's a process if you don't change you can't change will, yes, yeah yes. A, and change has to yes. happen if you don't change you can't change no. i love that no you have mm. to change and change is uncomfortable mm. you know so we, we we have to unlearn the the eating to be full because mm. 
it doesn't help us. Yeah. I, you know, so, so I, I would tell the women um, on my online class, mm -hmm. you know, I have a boot camp offline and online. Okay. For those who can't, you know, be present because of baby or right. something, we have one online. So I'll, I'll tell them, just what you're saying. They'll say, oh, Marvina, this meal plan, dear, me meal. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Charlie, you've been eating banku since you were born. What has Banku done I for know, you? <laughs> I know. As you are sitting here saying, oh, me, what? Can you tell me one thing Banku has done for you? <laughs> you see, so we have to try to unlearn mm. these things. And then you, you see that it's, the change is good for you. You realize it. You see it on your you skin. Can, yeah. you, you see it in, in your life. You know, you, you testify of it. And I see them testifying all the time. Wow. Yeah. So for like a day, um, regular, normal meal plan, you can have... Um, and I'm no dietitian, but I studied yeah. exercise nutrition as part of my, okay. yeah, so that's what I apply. Um, you can have a bowl of, of oats, caca oats, as we call it. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a bowl of oats, you know, a little bit of milk. We, we Ghanaians, we love our milk. No, the, 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 the milk has to go round. <laughs> just just two, two spoons of milk is enough. You know, two spoons of milk. Mm. If you really have to put sugar in, I, I, I cring at sugar. Mm. If you really have to put sugar in, just a teaspoon. Right. It's one of the things we have to unlearn. Mm. Sugar. The sugar. Sugar. Right. We eat so right. much sugar. We eat it because there's sugar in the bread, and then we put sugar in the cocoa. Yeah. And it's so it's sugar, 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 sugar all around. And that's, that's for breakfast. When you, you're done, you can have, you know, a piece of orange or a, a little piece of papa on the side. Mm -hmm. You're good for breakfast. Mm -hmm. For lunch, you can you have, you must have a snack. We don't okay, snack. That's yes, why we yes. don't make. Yes, you see, yes. you will have your oats in the morning. You time. wait till lunch. So by lunch you are yeah, famished. Yeah. So you just want to eat, eat everything. You see, that's that's the way the mm. body. But if you have a snack in the middle mm. between breakfast and lunch, mm. and when I say snack, it's just our normal akoshi by the roadside. Mm. Just the buy coconut. one coconut. Yes, right. buy one coconut with the pulp. Mm. You know, the pulp is very filling. Mm -hmm. you, you can just buy one coconut with a pulp right. and have it for, for, a snack. for a snack. Or um, tiger nuts or mm. uh, granuts, you know, just a, a, a handful. Little bit. Just, you know, munch on it. And, mm. and that's enough. One mm. orange, a little piece of popo. We have we have them Never all. Oh, we, we have, have we them have, all. We actually have. And, and if you notice, I don't know if you've noticed, but then like... Um, you know, our, our families mm -hmm. and people who live in the villages and everything, they are very, very fit and oh, yeah. very healthy. Oh, yeah. Because like, they are eating things that fresh. they are fresh, organic. Fresh. Because they are, you know, but then yeah. we in the cities, it's all about the canned food and the yeah. tin food. And That's sometimes true. the processing and all that isn't too it's, good. It's not. It's oh, not. wow. We've learned so much. And ladies, I hope you picked. I mean, today's, today's session is really educative. From today, people have to see us and say, ah, this today's woman, she's really changing because we are. We have to live for today and for tomorrow and for our families. I love that so much. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Now, today has been so, so educative. I'm sure a lot of women have learned, you know, and then one thing I just want us to quickly talk about is also the drinking of water because that's also really good for our skin, right? We can't overemphasize it all. It's good. <laughs> what, it's the best. It's, mm. it's life. Mm. It's life. Uh, uh, it's something that we should just learn to do. That's all I would say. We should learn to drink right. water. At least three liters a day, consciously. Wow. Drink it. Wow. You know, some people say that when you're hungry, you can drink water to sort of like, you know. It's true. Yeah. It, and, practically, it's mm. true. When you're very famished and you can't even think straight, just be drinking water. It, it sort of, you know, calms your system and it, it neutralizes, you know, the activity of the enzyme. Mm -hmm. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes no, things maybe, okay. Maybe when, when I start the scientific program, <laughs> I'll call you on. But I have to say, and I can't say thank you enough to Yaz. Thank They're you. one of my sponsors, oh, wow. sponsors of the show, and they are so supportive. And they have decided to give each guest a gift. Oh, wow. So you have this gift here from Yaz. Oh, wow. And they are very known for their sanitary pads. It's very, very popular, the Yaz sanitary pad. Wow. But then they also they do all sorts of things. They do, um, you know, they do washing powder. They do toothpaste, toothbrushes. Wow. 
they have baby wipes, diapers. I see you it. have a fresh yes. baby. I see and it. then there are some diapers in here. Oh, wow. So this is a special gift to you thank for you your so good much. work. Thank you so much. Thank you. And this is from Yaz. Oh, wow. Everything thank is in so there. Thank you so much to Yaz. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, yes. Yaz. You deserve it. Thank you so for much. For changing the lives of, of, of women in thank Ghana you. and everybody watching you. And I have a special gift to you. Okay, this is a Rene Q love pillow, and it's a little squeezy, Aww. cutie pillow that I've done for, for women. And I really want us to push self-love. It's so, so important, really? you know. It's so important for us to love ourselves, to be able to love somebody else. That's true. So I'm encouraging women to always look in the mirror and say something you love about yourself. So say something you love. It's not, it's not arrogance or anything, but it's just boosting your confidence for you to be able to step out there. So this is my gift to you. And every time you see it, so I want cute. you to you know, think about how special and unique you are. Thank you. But I want you to tell all of us one thing you love about yourself. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, cute. Mabna. It's so cute. What I love about myself is my shrill voice. <laughs> Your shrill voice? Yes. <laughs> I love my shrill voice because it, it, it identifies me. So I, people hear your voice they and do, they just... This is Marvina. <laughs> I love my shrill voice. And it's something I, I thank God for. If I didn't have a shrill voice, I don't know what else I could have had. But thank you, God, for my shrill voice. <laughs> Well, it's good. It's, it's great that we certain things that we won't look at, you know, we, we, it's important to identify it and then appreciate it. So I love that. That's Thank perfect. You. Thank you and so much. And it's been so amazing. This show today has been eye-opening. I'm sure you've learned so much. I have learned a lot. Certain things that we didn't know we've, we've picked. And that's why this show is amazing, actually. So you come on, you learn so much. It's exciting. It's interesting. It's just the today's woman to make you extra special. So thank you so much for watching. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for watching the Today's Woman Show. Today, I'm so inspired, and I hope you are too. We need to get fitter. We need to take care of ourselves to be able to take care of our loved ones. It's our responsibility. We are Today's Woman. Don't miss it next week, 11 a.m. on TV3, also on DSTV channel 279. And many thanks to my sponsors, to Morven Pick Ambassador Hotel for this beautiful set, to GTP, to Yaz, and the Rene Q Love pillow for pushing for women to love themselves. Love yourselves, lady, so you can love other people. See you next week and stay blessed.